Assalamualaikum and good afternoon everyone. Today's lesson is on resource schedule and constraint. Let's go through some exercise so that it can help you understand better. This is a precedence diagram or activity or node. I'm sure you guys must be familiar with this. If you're not, then no worries. You can flip through the CPM exercise that we did last class. In this exercise, the early start, early finish, late start and late finish has been given. You can refer to the legend here, indicating the information of the activity. And you can also easily determine the critical path, which indicates a zero for the slacks. So in this uh, case, the CPM is 1, 3, 6 and 7. The task is to determine the new early start and late finish for the project if the available resources is given uh, as three numbers per week. What you need to do now is to create a table of resource schedule in terms of bar chart consisting of the um, ID of the activity, the number of the resources, the duration of each activity, the early start and late finish, and also the slack. If you notice, only early start and late finish is the two primary information required. And this start here is referring to float. The horizontal bar here refer to the time. So in this case, it is weeks. So this table is named as resource shadow. Next, you need to include the number of resources for each activities per week. So you need to draw a bar chart. For activity 1, it starts on 0. In this case, it is week 1 and completes in week 2. Thus, first week requires two numbers of resources and so as the second week. So for activity 2, it starts on week 2. But logically, you cannot start at week 2 because activity 1 has not complete yet. That means you need to wait for activity 1 to complete, then activity 2 can start. It completes on week 10. If you notice, although the duration of activity 2 is 6 weeks, but it can finish at week 10. The difference here is what we call as slack or float. Activity 3 starts on week 3 and completes on week 6 and so goes to the rest of the activities. So at the bottom of the table, you need to determine the number of resources for, uh, for each week. So before we proceed with resource leveling, let's understand a little bit more about the current situation here. Besides the resource schedule, the next important information here is resource histogram. So you also need to develop resource histogram. If you notice the resource required for week 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 is exceeded from the available resources which is 3 numbers per week. This is what we call as resource constraint. It is also indicated in the resource histogram. Therefore, we need to redistribute the resources back to three numbers. So, how are we going to do that? We need to reassign the resources for each of these activity according to the available resources. And this is what we call as resource leveling or resource smoothing. Now let's proceed with the resource leveling. Now let's proceed with the resource leveling, but there are three rules that you need to consider. Rule number one is to select the minimum slack. Rule number two is to select the smallest duration. And, we, and rule number three is to select the lowest activity ID. So let's start with week one. Week one and week two requires only two numbers of resources so the total number of resources here is less than three so week one and week two is okay 
Now you look at week three. Week three, at week three, three activities starts at the same time. This is where the rules are to be considered. The first rules is to get the minimum number of slack. So, so in this case, activity three is zero. So you do not need to do anything for this activity. Therefore, you can load it to the uh, uh, activity three in this resource schedule. The next activity with minimum slack is activity two. It has slack of 2. So you need to delay activity 2 until the resources is not more than 3. In this case, you need to shove activity 2 until week 6. So that week 3, 4 and has total number of resources of 3. And week 5 and 6 has 2 numbers of resources. So, with the six weeks of duration, activity six, activity two completes at week 12. So, the new early start and late finish for activity two is six and 12, respectively, while the slack has been shoved to next four weeks. Thus, it has become as negative two. So, the next activity is activity four. Since activity 4 requires only one resource, resource, it does not affect week 3 and week 4. However, the slack has reduced to 2 instead of 10 because week 7 to week 10 has been allocated for activity 2. So the new early start and late finish does not change and still remain at week 2 and 6 but the slack now has become 2 so the next activity also has the same starts uh, rules 1 still applies for this case so is to identify the mean slack in this case activity 6 is 0 you can just load activity 6 and for activity 5, you need to show it the start time until total resources is not more than 3. In this case, the new early start for activity 5 is at week 10 and late finish is at week 12. Since you have shown it to the next 4 weeks, thus the slack has become negative 2. And finally, activity 7 can only starts at week 12. Since the total resources is already become 3, you, not, you notice that the project has delayed to week 14. So the early start for activity 7 is 12 and late finish is 14. Since we have shoved it to the next two weeks, thus the slack has become as negative 2. So with the new total number of resources, we need to redo the resource histogram. It shows that all activity has been redistributed and no more than three numbers per week. So that's all with resource scheduling, constraint and leveling. Um, you may now proceed to the assignment. So see you next week. Assalamualaikum.